<laughs> We're going to talk about derivatives. That's a very nice coming Yay! What a good day. Aren't you guys glad you're here on Friday? No. Oh, you better learn it. <laughs> you, trust me, you want to learn this stuff. Uh, trig functions, they're going to come back at you again and again and again and again and again. Math uh, 4B, oh yeah, that you spend most of your time doing trig. Even if you're not doing trig, you're doing trig. Trig substitutions, all sorts of stuff in 4B. Here we just get kind of basics, so you're lucky. You're lucky, but you really need to handle this stuff so that you <coughs> next class, oh, you look so depressed. So that next class you're, you get it. You ready? I'm going to prove it to you at least so you know where it's coming from. Would you like to see that? Yes. Okay. There's two things we need to understand. And they all start from here. <coughs> Please tell me you know those. Do you know those? Please. What's this one? One. one? one. Very good. What's this one? Good. If you know those ones, I'll prove to you that we can find the derivative of sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Those are the, our, our six that we're going to be working with a lot in this class. Okay. You've got to memorize those derivatives. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'll show you one of them. The other, I'll show you sine right now. The one for cosine is very similar. The one from tangent, cosecant, uh, secant, and cotangent can be done with the quotient rule. Uh, because once you, once you have sine, you have a, a lot of it pretty much done. You ready for it? We'll start today. We probably won't finish today, but at least I want to get started. What we want to do is if f of x equals sine, I want to find f prime. Well, here's what we know. We know that to take a derivative, uh, here's why we need limits again. We're going to go back to the, the, uh, the concept of a, a derivative as being a, a limit. Remember that we took a limit as h approach 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And you thought you'd never have to deal with that again, right? We're going to deal with it a couple more times to figure out some derivatives that we don't already know, and this is one of them. We'll get to what this is and what this is, and then we'll stop. We'll, we'll uh, come back to this on Monday. But remember how I had to do f of x plus h and f of x? In our case here, can you verify that f of x would be sine x and f of x plus h would be sine of x plus h? Are you OK with that so far? One thing you need to know when we're going through this you can't separate this x plus h unless we can use a trig identity. And we will use trig identity, but you can't just pull that h out. Or you can't just do sine x plus sine h. That doesn't work. So we're going to have to use a trig identity. I'll show you that later. But for right now, here's how far we've made it. We know that the first derivative will be the limit as h approaches 0, sine x plus h minus sine x over H. Are you okay getting down to that far, folks? You see where that's all coming from? Cool. We'll continue the rest of this next time. So, well, we're right in the middle of this proof. We're trying to prove the derivative for f of x equals sine of x. And what we're doing is using the limit to prove that because, well, that is a derivative. The other stuff, we were just kind of shortcutting the derivative. So you need to know that this function right there, that is the derivative function. So we got to use that for most things uh, in case we, we know it's a polynomial. Can, finagle it with our product rules or quotient rules. That's really how we find most of the derivatives. So here we've made it down. We know that f of x is sine x. We know that f of x plus h is sine of x plus h in parentheses. We're going to use one trig identity with this. And then we're going to try to get these two identities out of it. And if we can do that, because those are limits, then we'll be able to find the derivative. So here's our idea. As soon as we make it down to sine of x plus h, we're going to use the uh, addition rule for, for sine, which says you can split those things up like this. You can say this is equal to, you can look up, look up the identity on your own if you'd like. Sine of x plus h, in those parentheses, is the same thing as 
sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h. So this part right here is the same as this part right here. Those are the same. So I still have a minus sine x. All over h. Are you familiar with that identity? Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, I just can't remember which one it was called. It's the addition. addition. It says you can separate the addition of that angle like this. Sine of x cosine h plus cosine x sine of h. Now, I'm just going to interchange these two things real quick so I can have uh, my sine of x next to this sine of x. I, I'm going to end up probably factoring that out. Actually, I'm definitely going to be factoring that out. So let's just go ahead and interchange this term with that term. So sine x cosine h minus sine x, and then plus this thing at the very end. Are you okay with that so far? Sure, so I just reverse those things. Now notice that this whole thing is over h, right? which means I can separate each of those top parts as over h if I really wanted to. True? Make three different fractions. What I'm going to choose to do is a unique thing. I'm going to make two fractions. I'm going to make this one over h plus this one over h. And you might see why already. Do you see why already? Mm -hmm. Do you see a sine h over h right now? Anywhere? On the right-hand side, there's a sine h over h. We're going to be able to use that. <coughs> On the left-hand side, we see a sine x and a sine x. We're going to be able to factor that out. So we're going to factor the sine x out here. I'm going to make this look just a little bit different. I'm going to do cosine x times sine h over h. Last little thing, if you really want it to look identical, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. See how it's cosine h minus 1, and we have 1 minus cosine h. You see that? Actually, this, this is also another identity. I think they gave that to you in the book, as a matter of fact. It's the same exact thing. If we factor out a negative 1 from that, you could do, just to make it look identical, this would become a negative sine times if I factor the negative 1 out, those will reverse. I will get 1 minus cosine h. The cosine will become negative. The 1 will become positive. Over h. Yes, no? Are you guys okay with our algebra so far? Yeah. I got lost where you, where you got the cosine h minus 1 from. I have factored out sine x from this term and that term. So if I factor out sine x, I get cosine h. If I factor out sine x, I get 1. Factoring right. means division, so we're dividing. All right. Yeah. Um, where does the h, how come the cosine over h, I mean, it's not cosine over h in the second one? This one? Yeah, where did it? 3x over 2 is the same thing as 3 times x over 2. Good questions. Any other ones? You right with this so far? You okay that factoring out a negative will reverse those two terms? Good deal. See anything that pops up in our problem? Yeah, we see some identities, right? And because limits are separable, we can separate those, li those limits by addition, further by multiplication. We can separate limits like that, not derivatives, but limits, and this is now a limit. What is the limit of 1 minus cosine h over h. How much is this? Yeah. Zero. So negative sine times 0, that's going to give you 0. That part gives you 0. 
Are you okay with that? Are you sure? You can do one more step if you want. This is, remember, okay, let, let me wait, make one more thing clear. What is going to zero? The H or the X? H. The H is going to zero, not the X, the H. So the X's stay the same, just like you do with your derivatives. You remember doing your derivatives with limits? Your X's stay the same. So this is, would be negative sine X times zero. That's going to give you zero. Plus, what happens to the cosine X? Does it go to one? No, cosine X stays the same because it's an X that's not an H. Cosine, cosine X times, what's sine limit of sine H over H? How much is that? One. one. Zero plus cosine X. Cosine X. Is that interesting? No. No. Don't care. You're going to care. It better be interesting. You're going to have to memorize it firstly. It says the derivative of sine is cosine. What's the derivative stand for? Which is weird, right? Because it says find the slope at any point on sine. Plug in a number into cosine, you have the slope on sine. That's weird. It's kind of unique. We proved it though, right? Were you able to follow the proof? So now, do we have to do this again? No, you don't have to do it again. You now have the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. Is it reversible? No, I'm going to give you all of them right now. It's not exactly reversible. The derivative of cosine is not sine. Okay, it's not sine. It's close to that, but it's not sine. I'll give you all those right now. I'm not going to show you the proofs. The proofs are, for cosine are done very similarly. Okay, you, you do cosine very, very much the same as this. Uh, very similar to this one. Let's see if I can. But you'd still you'd still separate it. You'd still do your factorization, uh, but you'd end up with having a negative up front, and that's going to be what we get. You're going to see that in our derivative of cosine right now. So derivative of sine x is what, folks? Cosine. Good. So whenever you see that from now on, you got it. That's it. Let me give you the rest of them. This will be kind of like a, a memorization table for you. You've got to know this stuff. Are there any questions on this uh, anymore before we continue? All right. <coughs> so here we go. If you want to take a derivative of sine, you know it's going to be cosine. That's our number one. Now, the derivative of cosine, again, you can find it doing the same thing we did. Turns out that it's not exactly sine. It's negative sine. Negative sine. If you want to see that, come and, come and see me. I can prove that to you. But once you have those ones, check out what happens. What's tan x? What's tan? What, what, I'm sorry, not the derivative of it, but what is tan x? The identity. It's what over what. Sine. Sine. So with the quotient rule, you could find tan x because you'd have sine over cosine. Use a quotient rule, work it all out, simplify it, and what you're going to end up with is secant squared x. So the derivative of tan x is secant.